uh, Sean did mention, if you want the one that is the most similar to the actual one that uh, Eureka Garen wore on his wrist, that is the white dial. That said, that doesn't mean the others aren't authentic. It is one of the things that is interesting about the history of this watch. They did not plan. They didn't sit down. Russians weren't marketers like we were here in the U.S. where, you know, <laughs> very o different time. Where Omega decided yeah. they wanted to be the first watch, you know, uh, on the moon and right. they planned that in advance and so forth. This just happened to be the watch that Yuri Gagarin had in his personal collection. It may have even been his only watch. I don't know. I don't, who knows? But yeah. it was would have been given to him upon graduation from flight school. And it would have been what he just happened to put on his wrist. So there were multiple dials of this watch produced. The gray, now the black is a little bit of an update. One of the things that Stramansky wanted to do was to have one option that showed their current logo and had a little bit more to show the evolution of the brand. Um, the silver was one of the originals that was produced in that time, the white produced in that time. They, but they are all three uh, true um, authorized reproductions yeah. of the original Gagarin watches. With, honestly, in the 20 years now I've been doing this, one of the most historic watches I've ever presented. If you remember your history classes, science classes, you'll remember the name Yuri Gagarin. Why do you know that name? First gentleman in space. Before the Americans got into space, back in 1961, he was in space for about 90 minutes or so, did uh, some orbits of the Earth. Mm -hmm. This is the company that produced the watch he was wearing back in 1961. That's right. Now, that's the foundation for why this watch is so incredible. There's so much more. <clears throat> Let me point out, there's three color choices, first of all. Let's get that out of the way first. The black stands apart from the other two for a reason we'll explain. But just note, the black dial will be different. There's also a gray dial, and the one inside the capsule, which is modeled after the capsule that he was in, is the white dial. I've had a number of you ask me, which is the one that's the actual reproduction of his watch? This is it. The white dial version is the reproduction of the watch he had on that very historic day in 1961 when he was shot into space, and his watch had that, well, that brand, which if you read Russian, you can read very clearly right there. So that would be the one if you want the actual reproduction. But there are three choices here. So you have from, am I even saying it correctly, Stromansky is how I've been pronouncing it? Stromansky is how I would, yeah. Okay, yeah. so. It means navigator in Russian. Oh, you see, I did not know that. Okay, I just learned something there. But these are the three dials. There's the gray dial. A number of you have already been picking these up ahead of time. In fact, the gray dial has been the biggest seller so far. Birthday price, three fifty nine seventy six. I could talk all night, I, but the real expert right here, <laughs> Craig Hester, is going to talk about this. And in fact, if you have the current issue of, is it IW Magazine? Yep, that this International, is in? International Watch, Watch, Watch Magazine. Magazine. There's an article on page 116 that this gentleman wrote about this piece. Yeah, I did. I, the uh, happenstance of they were doing an issue on uh, military watches, and they asked me to write a piece about uh, Russian watches in space. So this this watch is uh, is covered in, in in that in that issue and oh we moved on um, and a uh, number of other of the Stramansky watches. There's a rich history of Stramansky watches being in space. Um, as Sean mentioned earlier, <coughs> this is uh, we represent the brand Stramansky here in North America, and it is the original brand that built the watch that was on the wrist of Yuri Gagarin when he went into space. Um, in April of 1961. This is the 50th anniversary of his flight. There have been all kinds of parties all over the world this year about that. Um, if you want something that is truly going to be a collector's item and, an his, and a historic piece representing that event in history, this is a way to do it and it's a way to do it for watch lovers. There, I am I, not one for hyperbole and, and Sean knows that, but yeah. I truly when I say that this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, this truly is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. There, right. there really is only one official commemorative edition of the Yuri Gagarin watch produced by the original company, Stramansky, and this is it. It is a numbered limited edition, as you can see very clearly there, of only 500 pieces. I want to make this very clear. It has been made very clear to me by the manufacturer. Once these 500 are produced, it is over. It will right. never be repeated. Not, 
just for the mere fact that there's only one 50th anniversary, even if they were to do a similar watch at some other point. Yeah. But they've even said that once this one's done, they're not doing another reproduction of the original watch again. This is it. It's the 50th. It's done. This is one literally by all three to have all argue. three of them in your collection. It comes in this amazingly cool packaging, yeah, which really is does. designed after the Vostok uh, capsule, mm -hmm. the return capsule that, that uh, Gagarin was in. Um, now, several people have asked me, why in today's world would they produce a watch that's 38 millimeters? Because we all know that big watches are in. Yeah. Well, the original watch was 38 millimeters. Back in 1961, when Yuri Gagarin went into space, they didn't make 50 and 55 no, millimeter no watches. No, about such things. That yeah. was a bedside clock back right, then. Right, right. I mean, except for the big divers, you know, yeah. the, the, the normal watches were 38, 40 millimeters. The original was 38. The uh, the number of things that are the same with this watch as the original are really striking. First of all, this is a 17-jewel manual wine mechanical Russian watch movement built by the Polyot Company of Russia. This movement is no longer made. It was a movement they bought the last quantity of specifically for this watch because it emulates the original 17-jewel movement that was in the watch. Mm -hmm. It is the same size. It is the same case thickness as Sean Parnett pointed out earlier, if you want the one that is the most like the watch that was actually on Yuri Gagarin's wrist, that is the white one. But let me be very clear that all three of these are actually reproductive, reproduction, reproductive, reproduction dials of... It's a different show. That's, yeah, that's a yeah. different show. Of the original watches that were built. One of the things that's kind of interesting about this, Sean, is, and I like to tell people, you know, in, in the American space... Uh, um, program, they, they particularly picked watches um, and planning for them to be marketed and so forth that, that were, you know, the Speedmaster and so forth. This just happened to be the watch that Yuri Gagarin had on his wrist. There right. was no plan for this to be the marketed watch tied to the first human space flight. Good point. Um, he got this watch upon graduation of flight school like every other pilot did. Um, so these dials are from that original series. Um, with the black being a little bit of an exception in that it is updated a little bit, um, and they did that on purpose to have one of one dial that was tied to the evolution of the brand. Uh, it, well, and, and again, with I the, could prattle on and on about this. No, so. and I could believe you and I alone. We could do two hours just, just on this, on this piece watch. because there's so much to get into here. But the key points, I guess, that I should bring up to you, part of my job is to mention things like value payments. There are six of them, so the first one gets us home. There is free shipping. If there was ever an enticement to get more than one, it could be the fact you won't pay multiple shipping costs because there is zero shipping cost. I just wanted to show you the black dial. You can see this is more of the modern interpretation. In fact, if you go to shopnbc.com, you can click back and forth between the two and get a real good idea the differences between the two. So this is slightly more modern than the white and the gray that are going to be more, not more, but an exact duplication of the piece that Yuri Gagarin was wearing into well, space. Th this is the current um, brand logo of Stramansky, and yeah. then on the white and, There's our website. and the gray model, you have the earlier model uh, yeah. logo, which also has the Corolla. There's the black. See how different that is. Our first Moscow watch factory logo on it, which anybody right. who knows Russian watch history will know the meaning of having that. I'm holding here, this is the article that was in uh, IW Magazine. I uh, want to give a shout out to Wexler Jewelers for loaning me their copy here locally. <laughs> that was good. Uh, that was nice of them. Because I don't have one yet, um, even. This is, uh, uh, and actually is an article that I wrote for IW about the history of this watch um, and the, the story behind it being the watch that Yuri Gagarin wore and how remarkably similar. Um, this is also, you talk about wanting to have... Um, uh, authentic again it's an authentic russian movement it's loaded with surreal like there's not a stitch of english anywhere on this watch that's very true which um, i love on the back where you see the uh, little rocket taking off on the back now obviously that's not the way the case back would have looked on the original it actually would have been just a simple plain right. stainless case back this is in order to commemorate the flight what you see there in the Cyrillic right below where the little rocket is taking off, that is let's go in Russian, which is what Gagarin said as they were taking off. That's right. What a um, trivia. So you, you have, uh, you know, this is, this is truly, truly yeah. a piece of Russian watch 
history. Let me Sean. very quickly show you the luminescence on this before we go. This is the gray. The gray and the white will have the same luminescence. Black a little different because of the different font that is used to those numerals. <laughs> 5996 is your first payment. Pre-show the gray started selling the most. They were all selling, but the gray was the biggest seller. Um, and of course, the second you said the white was the closest to one Gagarin war, I'm sure that took off. Then that's going to be the first, probably will catch <laughs> and up I like be the first the one to go. I look on the black yeah. because it's just a cool looking watch. Stumansky, the company behind this watch. Now, why is that name important? Because it really is, it's very important, and it's actually in the lettering that you see just south of the 12 o'clock position. That is the company that manufactured the watch that happened to be on the wrist of Yuri Gagarin back in 1961 when he orbited the Earth. First man in space. So first watch in space. Yeah, excellent point. Absolutely. The first watch in space. That white dial you see right there, if you want the actual reproduction of his watch, get the white dial. Now, I say actual, there's going to be some tweaks on the case back, and I'll show you that. The white is the most limited. That will be the first to sell out. There's the black, which actually is the more present day example of how their watches are made. The gray, similar to the white, with that actual 1961 sort of style to the watch. It is priced at $359.76, and it's on six payments of $59.96. I've always been a bit of a, we talk about being geeks, I've always been a bit of a geek when it comes to anything relating to space. Mm -hmm. I remember watching the first space shuttle take off ever, vividly, like it was yesterday. Uh, I watched the last space shuttle take off and land, and everyone in between, I think. So the name Yuri Gagarin rang a bell immediately to me when I heard about this watch. I never thought about, well, what did he have on his wrist? What you're seeing inside of a reproduction of actually the capsule, mm -hmm. the that, capsule that he was, I remember reading somewhere too, one of the reasons he was selected was he was a very short individual because yep. the capsules were small right. on their rockets and so he was 5'2 or something like that. So that's one of the things that went into their consideration. The <laughs> The thing about this one is you were talking about, this is truly a piece of history. And I, I don't always get to say that. Um, in fact, it's rare that we get to say that yeah. you're truly looking at a piece of history. This is the only 50th anniversary commemorative edition of the Stermansky Gagarin watch that will ever be produced. I've seen, it's interesting to me, I, I've seen other watches, some Swiss-made watches and others that are, that are Gagarin homages to Gagarin because it was the 50th anniversary. And they're fantastic watches, don't get me wrong. But if you want the original, if you want a watch built by the same company, the same company right. that built the watch that was on his wrist, yes. this is the only one in the world. Yes. Only 500 of each dial is being built. Once they're done, they are done. This is truly a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. If you That's don't right. get this, you will regret it. Yeah. Because if you have any interest in our Russian timepieces, any interest in the history of, of what we produce and, and what they are, this is the must-have yeah. for your collection. Now, actually, if you have at home, if you're a watch guy, you probably subscribe to IW Magazine, International Watch Magazine. Mm -hmm. um, this guy is now a published author yeah, because I, he has an article. I was actually a journalist before I got into this. So. I never knew that. Yeah, so and oh, I actually write, I write for IW from time to time on other topics of watches as well, not just the Russian watches. Yeah. But in this particular instance, I did, uh, I, I did have the pleasure and uh, opportunity to write an article. If you want to know more about the deep history uh, and I want to give a shout out to Wexler Jewelers for allowing me to borrow their copy, the only copy I think in Minnesota of IW. Uh, <laughs> I don't have mine. This just came out. Yeah, it just, I know. just I came don't out. This is the yet. October issue. Um, of, uh, I was able to write an article if you want to learn more about the history of the watch. Some important points. This is a 38 millimeter watch. Okay, by today's standards, that's small. But that was the size of the watch then. It, it would not be a true reproduction if they had made a larger watch. Watch, of, of course. This. I would love to see them come out with like a 50 millimeter version yeah. just for fun or whatever. Yeah. But if you want the true reproduction of the watch, the only truly authorized commemorative edition, this yeah. is it. Go ahead. I just Sorry. I have to stop go, you go, because go. we've got two minutes here. I'm going to show some luminescence very fast, and then I want to talk about the movement in this watch. Mm -hmm. Here's your luminescence right there. Close in the dark, obviously. Okay, now. 
Talk to me about this movement because the this movement is, to me was the deal censure. Yeah, this is the 2609 Polyot movement. Now, anybody who knows Russian watches knows that Polyot is the old name uh, in Russian watches. This movement is no longer made. The, Volmax wanted this watch, that's the company that owns Stramansky, they wanted this watch to be as true to the originals as they possibly could. They went out and got the last of quantity of the 2609, which is a 17 jewel movement, which the original was as well, so that this would be as true. This is a mechanical, manual wind Russian movement in this watch. It's so old school, it doesn't even have a date. Right. This is, this is how they were then. This is a Again, when you add all the things together, only 50th anniversary one, the only watch to be reproduced by the actual company that built the original watch. How many times do you get that opportunity? No, you know, I mean, this is don't. one of those guys. I, I don't know. You know, again, people who watch me, I don't say things like this that often. I, I'm not one for buying a watch you don't wear. Yeah. I tend to believe that, that wine True. is meant to be drunk, cars are meant to be driven, and watches are meant to be worn. Yep. This is a rare exception for me where I would say, Buy one of each of these, put it in your watch box, and don't touch it because it's only going to become more and more and more of a collector's item over oh, time. For because sure. Because this is and that, that Cyrillic on there with the little rocket that says let's go, which is what uh, uh, Yuri Gagarin said. And it really is, I, I've, you know, the geek in me loves the packaging too. This is designed. I'm crazy to look about this like packaging. The original, um, the Vostok capsule that uh, Yuri Gagarin was in, and it does come in this really, really cool packaging. That is packaging you want to keep. Don't you yes. know? Often I, I will discard packaging as well, but no, that is packaging you absolutely want to keep. So that does it. That puts the top on uh, your visit with us until it's been November. Awesome. I have loved every second of this show. Great. You have no idea. This has been such a treat for me. Uh, November, you're back. We'll let I'm everybody know November on Facebook 15th. and such. So if you follow him on Facebook, um, you can yep, find follow, out for sure. Look for the Watch Comrade with a K on Facebook. There's not that many of those on Facebook. Probably so it's not. fairly easy to find him.